I was once asked in a job interview what my favourite Python module was, and my answer was Pathlib. Admittedly, I didn't know that third party modules were acceptable answers to the question, but I do genuinely think that Pathlib is one of the more useful standard library modules for sure. Its main purpose, as the name suggests, is to make file input output operations easier and do so using an object oriented approach rather than a more functional approach like io.open. This video is going to be pretty much a whirlwind tour, a bit of a crash course in Pathlib, all the things that you might use in the real world more often than not. There are more things that Pathlib has to offer, but a lot of those I feel like are going to be used very situationally. So I'm not going to cover those so much. I'm just going to cover the ones that you are actually going to use, but we're going to be looking at how to create paths, reading files, opening files, scanning directories, writing files, deleting files, all this stuff. So how does Pathlib make our lives easier? Let's see together, shall we? So here we have our import. This just imports the path class from Pathlib. This is pretty much what you're going to be using about 95%. Actually, I say 95, I mean more like 99.9% .9 of the time. Uh, because this is what represents a path. And this can represent a path on any operating system because path will actually return either a Windows path or a POSIX path, depending on what operating system you're on. I'm not going to go into the details of how it does that, but it does allow you to use this one object for cross-platform, I guess, compatibility. You don't have to deal with it on different platforms because that is done in the implementation detail of whichever um object it gives back to you if you were to just create a path like this without any arguments or any properties or anything it will simply give you the relative path of the current working directory which will always be a dot if you wanted an absolute version of that you could do path.cwd using the class method instead and it would give you an absolute version of that path Similarly, if you were to call the relative one, or if you had any relative directories and you wanted to convert them into absolute directories, you could use path.absolute or more commonly path.resolve. And this calls absolute, but it also processes um, or follows, I guess is the correct term, symbolic links as well. Um, and that similarly will return uh, an absolute path to our relative path. You can also traverse the file tree using a path as a central point. So if you wanted to go up a directory, you could use path.parent. And this would now, or if I do, sorry, path. We'll do CWD because that's not going to be that helpful. Um, it will give you the parent directory. And if you wanted to access a child file or a child directory, then you can actually simply just use the division operator. And this has operator overloading to allow um, a path to be divided by either another path or just a string, say this lyrics.txt file. And now if you print that, it will print the full path to this txt file, which contains lyrics to this song that I'm not particularly familiar with. And that is the second time I've, I've done that joke <laughs> in I think three or four videos. So sorry about that, but I can't help myself. You would only really likely use this division operator if you, um, or if this suffix was a, a variable of some kind, otherwise you would probably pass it to the constructor like this. And this will return uh, the same path. This is a relative one, but if I then resolve this, um, it's the same absolute one as we can see. And now that we have this file, we can uh, do a number of things to it. So or we can do a number of checks with it. So we can check for the existence of the file using exists like this, which we can see it's true because it does exist on the system. We can also check specifically if it's a file using if uh, is file, which in this case it is, or if it's a directory using is dir, which in this case it's not because it's a file. So you have these different levels of existence checks that you can perform. Once you have a file and a file doesn't actually have to exist for you uh, to be able to use these next two things, you can get uh, different parts from it. So you can get p uh, parts, which you can uh, do for directories as well, which just gives you a list of all the parts. This makes sense if it's resolved or you can see it more clearly. Oops, I'm hitting all the wrong buttons now. Come on, there we go. So you can see all the parts there. Um, alternatively, you can just get the stem if you want just the file name, so this is lyrics, or if you want the file extension, then you can use p.suffix. And this includes the dot as well, 
this is .txt. These do work on directories as well, but I think uh, the suffix is just empty and then the stem is just the name of the actual directory itself. If the file does indeed exist, you can perform a number of operations on it. So you can read text, for example, and now we can uh, get it to return that in the terminal. And you have a number of um, options for that as well. Or you can read bytes, uh, which for a text file isn't going to do anything much different. It's just going to read as a byte string. But this allows you to load things like images or you know databases if you really wanted to do that. Audio files, that sort of thing. And this handles the the open read close loop as well. So it actually closed the file in the end. If we look into the implementation, we could see that it does literally just use self to open, which I think uses, okay, well, this is an abstracted one, but yeah, it literally just uses self to open in the background, but it handles all that for you in one line, which means you don't need to worry about it. You can also write to files as well, but we'll talk about that in a, a later section of the video. We'll move on to more destructive editing. Um, if you have a directory, so let's look in this Cabra directory, which is this one over here, which contains just a few uh, Python modules. Uh, you can scan through this directory in a few ways. So you can do itadir, and actually we want to do this in a for loop. So for path in p.itadir, print path, there we go, if I can type. And now this will print everything on the, I guess the top level of that or the root of that directory. So we have this hello.py, we have this dunder init.py, and then we have this spam folder. But you'll notice it's not found this eggs.py in here. If you want to do that, you can use p.walk, which works very similarly to os.walk. So you end up with your deer argument, you have your sub deers, and you have your files. So the deer will be the actual directory file um, scanned. Uh, the sub deers will be a list of all the directories within that directory. And then similarly, files is a list of all the files within that directory. So if we do, deer, we can probably do this and this will hopefully be easy enough to read. So you can do that. And we have Cabra and then we have spam, which is the directory in here. And then we have these two files, hello.py and init.py. And then within Cabra slash spam, we don't have any further directories, but we do have this x.py file in here. So we found that. If you want to find files of a specific kind, then you can do, if I, whoops, I did not mean to click that. <laughs> I meant to click that uh, because I want to use the root directory for this one. You can do p.glob, and then this will be for path. Yes, yeah, a list of paths. And this glob um, accepts a glob expression to say star.py, much like you would do in the terminal. And then this will return everything that is just a .py file. So if you run this, we just have the one thing here. Uh, you can do this recursively by using the recursive pattern, just star star slash. And this will match uh, any directories before it. So now we've found all of our .py files. Uh, or you can use our glob, which just prepends that exact same string to the start of this. So it's just a bit of a shorthand, really. And that works similarly to, I think it's the glob library that does that. If you want to start creating and writing to files, then you can do that. So if we just get rid of all this for a second, we can create a, say a, a test directory here. And again, when you create a path file, it doesn't need to exist beforehand because we can now do path.make directory. And now we can run this again. And we can see that this test uh, directory has been created. If it doesn't matter if it exists or not, so if you just want to do like create if not exists, then you can change this exist OK flag to true and it won't throw up an error. Otherwise, if it already exists, it will throw an error, um, specifically a file exists error. If you want to write to a file within it, so say test.txt, uh, you can do p.write text and we can say maybe subscribe to Carbara. And now we've written uh, this file within this directory. We can see that there. Similarly, we can do write uh, bytes. So if you processed any sort of image, or we just have a byte string like that, then we can do that. And by default, the write mode is set to W, so it will replace everything. 
using right text or right bytes will always overwrite the contents of the file. So if you want to do an append, I don't think you can do that in Parthia, but I could be wrong, but I, I don't have any options to do that. So you would still need to use with open and then set the right mode to append. And it's also worth noting that you can't create a file in a directory that doesn't exist. So if we have test two, um, and we try and do this again, we have this file dot found error, or, or sorry, file not found error, because test two is in a directory that exists. There also isn't any options to create any directories if it doesn't exist. So you'll need to do that manually. Once you've created a file and written to a file, you can actually change the permissions for it. So if we set this P, we could do chmod, and then you set them similarly to Linux permissions. If you're not sure what Linux uh, permission numbers are, I would recommend going and looking it up or watching another video. I don't want to explain it here because I wouldn't be able to do it justice. But the, the short of it is that typically you can represent permissions as a three digit octal number. So 777 is access to everything. Something like 644 would be a little bit more conservative and that's what's recommended for SSH public keys, for example. And you can actually do that using Python's octal notation. So if you do zero O, this is now an octal number and now 644, we'll set it to permission 644. You can also set it to 777, which I think is the default when it creates a file. So if you wanted to set it to 777, access to everything and everyone, you can do that. If you want to limit it, you'll have to change mod it after. You can also use Parthia for more destructive operations such as renaming and removing. So if we wanted to rename this file uh, to something else, then we can use p.rename and then we provide the target in here. So we could do test slash hello.txt. And if we run this, we'll see that test gets renamed to hello.txt here and all everything's copied over. If we decide we actually don't want this file anymore, then we can update this to be hello. And then we can set this to unlink, which is a weird name for this, um, but this also unlinks symbolic links if they exist. But if you do that, it will actually delete the file completely. So there's no remove, there's no delete. It took me a little while to find <laughs> because it is a strange name, but it is unlink to remove files, which is one of those weird things. And again, uh, um, sorry, again, this has this missing OK. So if this is false, it will say file not found. If we just set missing OK equals true, then it doesn't matter if it's not there or not. Uh, and then finally, if we wanted to remove a directory, to so say we wanted to remove test, we can use the uh, much more conveniently named remove directory to do that. The only limitation to that is that the directory has to be empty at the time that you delete it. So you'll either need to go through and unlink or remove uh, all the files within it beforehand, or you can just use shutil or shutil, depending on how you're used to hearing that heard, uh, to do that instead. And that concludes our whirlwind crash course tour of all the useful things. Well, I say all the useful things, all the mainly useful things within Parsley, but I imagine that's what most people will be using most of the time. Obviously, situationally, you'll be using things like the anchor and is FIFO and stuff like that, but I've never had a need to even think about that, so I haven't included them. If you like the video, then make sure to leave a like down below. And if you have any questions or comments, then use the comment section down below for them as well. If you want to see all the other ways that Python is awesome, then check out the Python is awesome playlist in the end cards. And I'll see you in the next one for whatever we do next.